Hi guys, welcome back to another video or your first video here, I don't know. Welcome if you're new here, welcome either way. So this is going to be my April and May book haul. March and April, sorry for the brain fart. I don't know if I missed another month as well, but I don't have that many books to share and I was on holiday and away for a while, so... I'm back now and filming and telling you about the books that I bought. So the first category I have got is plays. So the first one that I'm going to speak to you about, let me just move over here, here yeah. let me move over here a little bit. Uh, the first one is The Red Barn. I can't remember who this is by, but I bought this earlier this month or possibly le late last month, I can't remember now. I bought this I read this and I unhauled this all within the past two months or so. So yeah, I will get more into this in my wrap up. But yeah, I bought this on a whim, tried it out and didn't like it. So that one's already gone. The next one I have is The Tin Violin by Alan M. Kent. I have no idea what this is about. I saw this in a charity shop and I thought I'd pick it up as just a play to try. And I have another play in that category, so I might as well talk about them together. And it is Women Beware Women by Thomas Middleton. Um, and again, saw this in a charity shop and I have no idea what this is about. The back sounded rather intriguing about sort of like the power of women. Uh, that cover though is really creepy. So I will have to see how this goes. The next two are both plays that I got from my Play in the Post subscription. So I have got The Collaboration by Anthony McCartan and I've got Athena by Gracie Gardner. So I will be reading both of these very soon to find out what they are about. And the last play I have is the script for Elizabeth the Musical by uh, Michael Coons and Sylvester Leve, and this is in German but I did want a copy of the script because this is a musical that I will be seeing with a friend later on this year. We both are a really big fan of the sort of more classic German musicals and I am really excited to go see this. This essentially follows the historic figure of Elizabeth, who was the Empress of Hungary, I believe. And it sort of follows her life in a sort of historic fashion, but it sort of weaves in a fantasy element where it talks about her essentially love affair with the personification of death. And it's really fascinating. I love, love, love the music. And I hope to look through this and actually read it in the German and be able to translate it. So. I bought this. So my next sort of category is graphic novels, both of which I bought while in Edinburgh. And so first of all, I have The Adventures of Tintin Volume 2. Now I've been collecting this specific collection of the Tintin graphic novels by Egmont Publishing, this sort of hardcover version and it's sort of collected into eight volumes. So when I saw this one as one I didn't own already, I thought I'd pick it up from a used bookshop in Edinburgh. So I'm excited to get to this once I get volume one, which is one of the only ones I now don't have. And the next graphic novel that I got from Edinburgh is Sunstone volume two. Now I am not going to show you the inside of this graphic novel because these the series is quite dirty, but it's essentially a female-female romance, but is quite involved with the BDSM. And I just found it fascinating that they were selling something like this. I bought the first volume in Waterstones and I really enjoyed the plot line. I really enjoyed the artwork. And so I shall see where this series goes in volume two. And the final two were books I got in a closing down bookshop in Edinburgh. And that is two queer books. So I first of all have the Queer Bible, which I originally, when I first saw the cover, 
assumed that it was going to be a sort of examination of the Bible looking at queer themes, but it's not that. So what it is essentially is prominent queer figures in today's world talking about the prominent queer figures that inspired them or had a huge impact on their life. And I thought, not I thought, I'm currently reading this right now and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think it's giving me a lot of sort of insight into some wonderful queer history. And there was a quote somewhere in the introduction of the book. Let me see if I can find it now. Oh, here we go. I want queer people to not just survive, but to thrive, knowing that they walk in the footsteps of the bravest, fiercest, most inspiring people to walk the face of the planet. We stand on the shoulders of giants. It's time to learn their names. And I really love that quote, and I'm really excited to see how this pans out. And the last book I have is The Art of Drag by a number of authors, and this is essentially a non-fiction book talking about drag but it is accompanied by a lot of very interesting artwork if I can hold it up without it flopping over. So it goes into the history of some prominent drag figures but also something I find really interesting is the way that it's bound. So if you can see here once I open it up the binding doesn't stick to this page and you can kind of see the way that it's bound. I've never seen that in a book. But yes, I am very excited to get to this one as well and share with you my thoughts. So there you have it. Those are the nine books that I hauled over the past couple of months and I shall see you in my next video. Bye.